Uh, so as we, uh, uh, Melrod eats fairly quickly and uh, there's probably some other workers gathered around, like say a large fire pit or something. Oh, absolutely. There's several small fires. There's several small tables. You'll see gatherings and you'll see it seems to be groups of six. Um, you know, small squads like yourself who sort of are all sort of congregating together, but, you know, in this sort of communal space. But you can sort of see the dynamic of this work camp of how people have been put into these squads that, you know, work and spend their time uh, together. Okay, so uh, Melrod will sort of, he probably has already removed his traveling cloak, but he'll uh, take that in his pack and sort of leave that uh, with the, the rest of the guys, uh, just ask them to watch it. And uh, he walks up to the fire pit and he begins to tell a story, just you know, sort of does a little bit of bark or carnival barking uh, just to get people's attention and then launches into uh, a story. And he's going to use minor illusion Ooh. at the same time, uh, basically to provide visuals for the story that he's telling. And uh, the form this illusion takes is the smoke from the fire uh, just and some of the flames just seem to sort of swirl into the various figures uh, in the story. And as he does the voices of the various characters, you know, they're they're being animated. Uh, so he will tell uh, the the fairly commonly known tale, uh, but he tells it to, in his own style of the Bullywug and the Ettercap. Uh, would you <laughs> like to hear story. the story? Do I do the story? Uh, you can if you want to. If you want to, if you want to do the story, you're welcome Where? to. Otherwise, you can just roll a performance <laughs> check, and we can see how it goes. This will be the yeah the abbreviated version of the story, uh, but uh, uh, you'll get the gist. Uh, a bullywug was one day standing by a stream when he was approached by an ettercap. Friend bullywug, said the ettercap, I wish to cross the river. Will you bear me across on your back? The bullywug replied, No, my friend Ettercap, I cannot, for you would only bite me and inject me with your venom when we are halfway across and we would both die. I promise, friend bullywug, this will not occur, for why would I wish to kill myself? Very well, then, clamber upon my back and I will bear you across. When they reached the halfway point in the stream, the bullywug felt a sharp pinch on his back look back to see the Ettercat with its fangs deep in the flesh of his body. He felt himself grow cold as the venom reached his veins. But why, why would you do this? Because I am an Ettercat fool. And that, uh, so again, so there's a little more flourish to the and, and, Yes. And with that, as he begins to tell a story, Kellogg pulls his drum off his back and begins to beat a beat to the story. And, and as he do, does this, lights actually come off of him and begin to float around him. Uh, as unknowingly to him, he casts Dancing Lights uh, as he beats this drum along <laughs> to the story. Uh, Excellent. So we got some dancing lights. We got a minor illusion with all the smoke and the ettercap cap and the bullywug and the stream. So yeah, with all that going on, uh, you guys, uh, you can either each roll a performance check, or uh, either or, uh, Melrod can roll it with advantage with the help from Kelly Mock. What would you all prefer? What do you want? Roll for advantage. advantage. Okay, I'll take the advantage. Yeah, on you, that. If you each roll, you the highest one, of course, would win or do the advantage. Right. So. You can just click on your performance right on your roll 20 sheet and it should pop right up. This entire time wandering around and getting to the bar, uh, Dancing Rain's just been on all fours. The cloak's been dragging behind them and now is just footing, sitting in a full sit next to the story. Um, well, actually like laying down and as the story is progressing, the tail is just flicking. So, and so roll, roll oh, twice for performance? Well, uh, yeah, um, that works fine. So, uh, yeah, no, with uh, advantage, uh, you actually, uh, people begin to uh, really just start looking your way and start paying attention to you. And then as the smoke starts to swirl around and you can see this edder cap and the small, uh, and the bullywog, uh, and a river made of smoke, and then the lights begin to spin, uh, at the end of it, the whole place is just like, entranced 
with uh, with the story, and they all start clapping at the end. Um, you actually get see a few copper pieces get thrown your way. Um, some towards uh, some towards Kelumak and there's drumming. Others towards Melrod, and uh, you see uh, you see uh, Miss Avery is just enwrapped. She's like. Well, now you just come back anytime and tell whatever stories you want to tell. <laughs> oh, and I should mention that uh, normally, and and up to this point, uh, Melod, you know, he's relatively pleasant looking, but somewhat nondescript. However, when he's telling the story, uh, his eyes take on an almost uh, coppery hue, and uh, he uh, seems much more magnetic. Ooh. Even though copper is not a magnetic metal. <laughs> 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 Well, well, now that everybody's in a good mood, and you can see Reek picking up the coins in front of Kelomax, uh, 